Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Hypocritical media. What you got to say? The Lakers host the Nets tonight in what many are predicting will be a finals preview. LeBron will still be without Anthony Davis, but the Nets will be missing Kevin Durant for this one. And Staples, Kerry Irving, and James Harden are expected to play. Yahoo Sports senior NBA insider Chris Haynes joins us now. Chris, it's been too long. I got to start by asking you, how important is tonight for LeBron's MVP case? Well, Jenny, I'm glad you brought me on. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was it was all your idea to, to talk some <laughs> sense here Always. on this discussion. Uh, thank, glad, glad to be back. But look, let, let me talk about this. Whenever we're talking about MVP candidates and looking at their resumes during that season, we tend to look at marquee games and marquee matchups. And the Brooklyn Nets, it doesn't get no bigger than that. Now, I will say with Kevin Durant being out, I think that takes a lot – of the, the firepower away from what could happen with LeBron when it comes to his MVP currency. But I will say this. He has a lot to carry right now. And if he is able to defeat the Brooklyn Nets and play spectacular and, and particularly outplay James Harden and Kyrie Irving, then look, this this can do nothing but bowl well as a voter, as a, you know, as, as a voter. I will look back on some of these marquee matchups, these marquee games, and this could be one of those games I look back on that could it sway it or not? I don't know, but it's something to look forward to. But I will say this. I don't want to get too much off topic, but there's a guy by the name of Damian Lillard over there in Portland uh -huh. who is heating it up as the Portland Trailblazers in fourth right now. So LeBron, I say he's carrying a load, but he's not carrying the same load that Damian Lillard is without C.J. McCollum and Yusuf Nurkic. So LeBron, it's, it's probably his to win right now. If I'm doing an MVP ranking, Probably number one, LeBron, because they're around. They're number two in the West. You got to look at guys like Joel Embiid is doing it over in the East, number one in the East. But, uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot to gain from this game. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's all in. It's going to all in with tonight's affair. I agree. Dame with the Dame Lillard uh, situation. I tweeted that last night. At some point in time, we're going to have to put mention his name in the MVP discussion. But I think the biggest thing that LeBron has working in his favor, Chris, is that He's playing these games, and he's winning these games without Anthony Davis because the was the thing. Oh, he had AD, he had AD. If he can continue to win, keep them in the two seed. I, and <clears throat> Skip and I got a couple of cases, bet that they were going to go six and three in this nine-game stretch, which we will believe in at least nine games without Anthony Davis. If he can go six and three, he can go seven and nine and do what he's been doing, I don't see how he, he would have not done anything to lose any ground in the MVP race. So with that saying, winning is going to be the most important caveat for his MVP. LeBron's going to be LeBron. The thing that I hate is that it's stressing his minutes because we're trying to. He was trying to keep those minutes around 33, 34 skip, and for the better part of eight, 12, 13 games, he was at about 32 minutes a game. And then all of a sudden, it went to 33, went to 34, and so now we're starting to see an uptick in his minutes, and we're going to see even more of that because there is no more AD. And he's going to have to take on more of the scoring load and more of the rebounding load, hence the 13 defensive rebounds. So LeBron's going to be LeBron. We're going to win this game tonight, and we're going to be 2-0 without AD uh -uh, since he's uh, been out 5-1 already without AD. <laughs> so I have one quick question for both of you. Can LeBron James get any breaks or what? What breaks? He, he gets to duck the Clippers in the bubble last year, and then he gets the five seed from the East – he gets the heat, and in game one, they lose arguably their two best players at that moment. Dragic, who was leading them in playoff scoring, and bam, their heart and soul, they're gone in game one. How lucky are you there? And then we get to what we thought was going to be the marquee matchup of this regular season. At Staples, the new Nets, the nothing but Nets. Uh, but they don't have the best player on the planet. There's no Kevin Durant. So let me ask you a question, Skip. If I had told you before the beginning of the season, there was going to give, be a game between the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron James, with mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving and, 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 uh, uh, and James Harden. Would you have said that would have been a marquee matchup? Well, not bigger than if it would just oh. been KD and Kyrie, I'd say that'd be a marquee so, so, matchup. So, what, so what, we don't have, they don't have AD. So what do you okay. think about that? Is that a break for LeBron? He doesn't have AD. 
I think LeBron should win this game. They're favored to win this game. And I think the pressure has actually mounted on LeBron tonight because I think everybody will expect him to win this game. You expect him to win this game. I believe Chris expects him Even to win this game. Even if KD was there, I would expect him to win. I wouldn't because that's his nemesis. <laughs> that is the man who shot it right in his grill, in his house, to win the MVP in game threes back-to-back -back in the final. What did, oh, oh, did he do that? What, did we, what was that? OKC when he did that, right? Who? KD. He no, did. he's not the Warriors. Oh, okay, okay. But did the Warriors not need him? Did they not beg him to come and save them it was a, it after was, they blew that 3-1 lead? Skip, it was a perfect match. <laughs> it was a perfect match. They needed him, and he needed them. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Did y'all just hear that? So for all you that's been saying that was a weak move, jump off a bridge right freaking now. I'm going to rewind that. Let, let, let's rewind that. Let the Ryan that. Bring it back, DJ. Bring it back. Did not need him? Did they not beg him to come and save them? It was a, after it was, they blew that three-one lead. Skip. It was a perfect match. <laughs> it was a perfect match. They needed him. He needed them. Okay. Hold on. Wait. 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 Wait a minute. Wait. 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 Wait a minute. We got. It. We got. It. We got. It. Bring it back. Wow. He no, he's not the Warriors. Oh, okay, that, okay. But did the Warriors not need him? Did they not beg him to come and save them it was a, it after was, they blew that 3-1 lead? Skip, it was a perfect match. <laughs> it was a perfect match. They needed him, and he needed them. Okay. So, Chris, I, I give you this. LeBron is leading the MVP race by default because, <laughs> listen, the, the guy I saw last night, and I watched the whole game, that seven-foot monster in Philadelphia, he is something, but he hasn't played enough games. So you dock him for that because he did play without Ben Simmons last night, and he was spectacular, albeit against the Rockets. But but listen, Boogie had no chance no, against no, no. Joel Embiid no, last night. No. Mm -hmm. So, so Chris, how much do you have LeBron ahead in the MVP race, and why do you have him ahead? I have him ahead right now simply for their placement and the fact that, you know, a lot of people didn't think, you know, he would be able to play at a level right this right now. Most people thought AD at, at some point, whether it was last season or this season, will take over the threshold of carrying the offense. But LeBron James is still doing it, and the Lakers are playing at a high level. To me, Skip Shannon, there is no clear-cut MVP favorite right now. It's in flux right now. If I have to pick my top three candidates right now. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it was Nikola Jokic. You know, he, he he was in that top three. Denver is slid a little bit. I believe they're seven or eight right now. I got to go with right now LeBron, number one, by hair, Joel Embiid, Damian Lillard. And Damian is, is, is he's catching guys. But LeBron has a hair. And he has a, he has a golden opportunity right now to show people that he can still carry a team in the Western Conference, keep them in the top two in the West, without AD being there for a long period of time, it's going to be hard to overlook that if he continues at that at that pace. Okay, so Chris, quick questions. Does it bother you at all when it comes to LeBron's MVP case that he is second in the league in turnovers and he's about to track down Luka, who's first? Does it bother you that in the month of February, LeBron in eight games is shooting 28% from the three-point line because he's fallen way off that hot streak that he was on He's now 14 of 50 of 50 in February from the three-point line. Do those two facts, stats, bother you? Well, it, it would bother me if if it's indicative of how the Lakers play. They're losing. Now, it, it, yeah, if they're losing, it, it will bother me. But I will say this, Skip. I don't look too much into percentages. I look at the, the impact. Hold on, hold on. Did y'all just hear what he said? This goes to the dumb fans out there who want to talk about this guy shooting 50-some percent from the field. This guy is shooting 40 shots, y'all asses up. Let me bring that back, DJ. Bring it back. Wow! I want to say this, Skip. I don't look too much into percentages. I look at... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. HD finna destroy another one. HD finna destroy another one. Go DZ. Go DZ. Go, go, go DZ. Let's bring it back again. Say it loud. F percentages, I'm proud. Say it loud.
the Lakers play they're losing. Now, it, it, yeah, if they're losing, it, it will bother me. But I will say this, Skip. I don't look too much into percentages. I look at the impact. Because as we've seen, there's a lot of players that play in this league that you look at the numbers and you look at, wow. But they have no impact on the game. I don't think anybody can make the case of LeBron James doesn't have an impact on the game. There might be a night he doesn't. or nine turnovers. I mean, he just he don't have so an impact of getting guys involved. That kind of comes with the territory. So, so to ask your question, unless the team is losing, unless it translates to that, they're, they're not, not beating losing. winning teams like that. Yeah, they're feasting like, on the bottom feeders. I can't hold that against them. Okay, and then flip it around on the Nets. Are your doubts rising about their ability to win the Eastern Conference now that those big three have played only six games together? It's, it's seven that they were actually in the game. Remember, KD got yanked yeah, out of that game. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. So I'm not going to count that one. So it's six games those three have played together so far. That's definitely um, concerning and alarming. But I will say this. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm more so concerned about that because I think at the end of the day, they'll be all be there when it's time to really play. I'm talking about the postseason. Um, I, I give the Nets a better shot now, not because of what they've been able to do on the court, but I give them a better shot now in the East because Milwaukee has disappointed me to this point. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And and if and if Milwaukee isn't up to the standards that we all thought they would be, they're supposed to have improved, especially with the acquisition of Drew Holiday. But if they don't reach that level that we thought, I don't see anybody over in the, in the East aside from Philly, not to disrespect Philly, but there's not many teams out there that can really, you can say in a seven-game series, that can give it to, to Brooklyn. So uh, for Milwaukee's disappointing start, you know, I, I, I kind of favor the Nets a little bit more than I did early on. I like Philly also, but the question is, Skip, you know come playoff time, you play every other day. Can Ben Simmons give me 40 and 20 every other day? Now, I know in game one, after a two- or three-day layoff, he going to probably give it to somebody in that first game might be bought. But then you start playing every other day. And we've seen, Skip, come playoff time, we've seen Joel Embiid miss games. <laughs> you know, his, his tum-tum is hurt. You know, <laughs> and he, and you know, he, he, you know something, something going on with that. He, the girl, uh, the carry, the baby carry wasn't good enough for him. So that's what's concerning about him. So basically, I know you guys heard this. Y'all probably seen it on um, Undisputed. Um, I hope they don't take this down, but hey, they might. But while it's up, did you just hear the key things that y'all really needed to hear? It's not about percentages. It's not. Percentages were made for idiots to follow the game. It was made for idiots to follow the game. It was made for idiots to basically try to understand the game. Percentages stand for where the player is most effective at. Do you hear what I'm saying? If Wilt Chamberlain or Kareem is in the 50 percentile of field goal percentages, that means they play near the basket, idiot! <laughs> oh my God, dog. It's, it's the dumbest thing. And then, and then what makes me upset they're not using the, the stats and all that, the field goal, per, the percentages on the brownies because they don't want it to hurt their cash cow. But if it was Kevin Durant, they'll be like, oh, 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 Kevin Durant shot 30% from here and he was only 40% It's like, dude, okay. He probably was off and he took a lot of shots from either the three or the mid range. That's why Kobe's numbers were at 44%. He shot he shot threes and he shot the mid-range shot a lot. He did it more than Mike. Mike was more of an inside guy. And what I mean by that is he was mostly towards the basket. Later in his career, Mike's percentages kind of dropped. 
because he was taking more shots outside and taking more shots from the mid range. A lot of players don't play that way no more. They shoot from the three or they try to drive to a to, to the lane if it's an open lane. So the Kevin Durant and the weak move, everybody like to say, oh, it was a weak move. It wasn't a weak move. Golden State wanted him and he went to Golden State. He went to a team with one franchise player. They depleted the bench and they brought him on. It made them worse. They were able to get better because in games, Kevin Durant would step up late. Steph Curry has a problem stepping up late in games. He does. Now, he'll make some big shots, but at also he'll also struggle at times. Kevin Durant in the clutch has shown and did a lot more than Steph Curry. Not saying Curry's a bum. Curry is not a bum. Curry's a beast in the fourth quarter as well. It's just the last second shot sometimes he misses. But as far as not the last five minutes, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant are like neck and neck, or Steph Curry's probably a little better. They're up there with each other. Now, that's been debunked from all you guys. He made a weak move. No, he made a move that won him a championship, two of them, two finals MVP, and he beat your bum LeBrownies. So I've debunked all of that. That's been debunked. Shannon Sharp, y'all guy who leads that case, he joined the Warriors, said that they needed each other. Just leave it at that. Exactly. They both blew 3-1 leads, and they both came together. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and they beat that bum. <laughs> because the league lets him stack his teams, and then you got the refs on his side. The percentages. Which one is it? First, y'all use percentages here to say he's great. Then y'all use percentages here saying, oh, the percentages don't matter. Why? Because he's leading in turnovers next to Luka? And I kept telling you, LeBron James is a point guard. He's not a small forward. He doesn't know how to run sets. He's always throwing the ball crazy to guys either cutting to the basket or over here at the corner or the corner three. And it usually gets picked off. And then in the last five minutes, a lot of games that are tight, he loses the ball inexplicably. But he's supposed to have these huge hands, but he's 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 losing the ball. So that's part one of the overrated media. I have debunked your percentages trying to use that to define it's about impact. Kobe Bryant's impact was way bigger than LeBron James. Way bigger. Way more polarizing. He was touching Michael Jordan levels. On and off the court. So before you guys down or throw Kobe under the bus like um a one content creator who used to kill Kobe all the time, but now all of a sudden he wants to give him praise. I'm not going to call any names out because I don't need to call names out. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you for listening. We are out. Dizzy. 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 Dizzy.